So hello dear community, um, thank you for tuning in and welcome to my channel if you don't know it, please have a look around. Uh, this is a video about a experience that I'm making in my life in the moment, which is trying to find out what it is to be a taxi driver, uh, particularly a taxi, bike taxi driver. So in this video I will give you a little overview of my experience with this. I'm currently driving bike taxi. In the last, uh, I have written it down, in the last 51 hours, I've been driving 34 and a half hours. So I've been sitting on this and serving in a festival. So I share some of this experience about also being a bike taxi driver and then um, share some, some thoughts uh, in general, not only the experiences, but some thoughts on this. And then as probably in most of my videos, we are taking a look at the bigger picture, kind of where does it fit in with mobility challenges? Where does it feel uh, fit in with our lifestyle? And uh, of course, our various footprints and our possibilities to, yeah, kind of get out of this alive, right? This is a survival game on this planet. Um, and in the moment, it doesn't look that good for our species, right? So uh, the bike taxi video, um, well, First of all, like on this festival now, there's like uh, in we're in Joensuu in Finland. It's summer, and I'm just coming back from bringing some customers somewhere. And I love this place here because there's lots of blueberries. So I had to stop and took some blueberries and have a break. And soon it might be raining, so I'm getting prepared to set up everything for rain. Put some cover on for the customers to stay dry. So yeah. So first of all, a bit on the joys of driving bike taxi so one of the big joys is just really the, the this being out in the open right it's like being able to go anywhere almost like this uh, and this spontaneous you know this ability to to just stop wherever and chat with people and you can choose so many different routes like um especially here in UN so it's like kind of this checkboard pattern in the town so you can go basically many routes without going uh, longer distances there are some diagonals there are some traffic lights so I really enjoy also this challenge of finding the best route and, and of course, like being there for the customers. It's like really nice to have the interaction and surf with the people and hear their stories and, you know, get them have a really just a good time. Um, going back there, like a bit later about these people having a good time. I want to say a few words on that. Um, but then again, still more, more on the, the joy is like, it's, you know, it's silent. Like people can talk, there's a, a music speaker they can connect to and listen to their own music. And so it's like always very nice for me also to hear, okay, what are they you know, talking about? What are they listening? Um, and and um, how, how are they feeling also quite often? Like, especially with the festival, people are often like pretty drunk. Some might even be in need of help. So I also enjoy this, like also in this festival area, like I couldn't be, in this festival among all these people if i hadn't had this kind of kind of backstage opportunity like you know we're we are in this area of the festival around the fenced area but still you're kind of a bit disconnected from this party crowd and that's really nice also to to be able to get in many places we get to see things where i don't know um others who are sober right workers other taxi drivers maybe of car taxis or even like in some occasions police and the workers in the festival, they don't get to see these things. So what's happening also on the way to the festival. And, and so quite often, like I've had possibilities to help. I just had this, uh, they were like um, some medics, they were looking for somebody who had made an emergency call, but they couldn't locate the person. I just offered, okay, if you want to use this taxi to drive around, uh, go for it, use it. Um, I'm, I'm driving you happily for free, but um, they didn't need it. So, but I, I really enjoy this, this serving part. Um, and then I really enjoy that you see really a lot in a very good speed. So the speed of the bike taxi also like this is, you know, very, uh, you have a good view when you sit in the front and in the back. Uh, we can fit three people and you really have a good view. You can turn around to the sides and, and it's like really, really enjoyable to see things in a speed and, and, uh, and that's also something part of the challenge when finding the best route is like also like finding this small scale route, right? Like when it's really, really crowded in this festival area and this entry area where people, you know, line, pile up and line, stand in queues to get in and hang out and just drink. And there's people everywhere walking, sitting and just navigating way through this is like, I, I love this, uh, this navigating part. And also, you know, you always have to look at the ground. Are there like, you know, is there glass somewhere? 
are there bumps you know anything that you might drive over that is you know shaky for the bike and the customers and yourself um, so always kind of finding the smoothest ride you know through the city which Joensu is a great, great cycling city so I have to say this like chapeau for city of Joensu um, yeah really good uh, big advancement in the cycling infrastructure still a lot of cars um, I think we should just put the you know, bikes on the roads right just put bicycle tracks everywhere and anyhow um, so this is about the joys let's see I have a little list here um, yeah I think I mentioned all this and then something that I noticed is like really my greatest respect to all my colleagues uh, who are driving bicycle taxis rickshaws right this one has an electric motor that helps really a lot I'm, I'm amazed by how much it really helps um, I'd like to see how this would go without this electric engine because if you don't use the power the electric motor is still turned and taking creating a resistance so uh, it starts raining um, and I just sent a mosquito flying um, did you see it I, don't know, I was sitting here on my nose all the time greetings to the mosquitoes yeah so I really respect to all the rickshaw drivers in the world um, I've been 20 years ago in Indonesia uh, and I've been driving a bike taxi there, a rickshaw, and we just hired this rickshaw for the whole day and let the guy who was driving it sit in the, in the, the, the kind of the customer seats, they were in the front in that one. And so we had him sit there with one of us and we just cycled him around town and he had a free day off and was paid and it was like joy of his life. Like really, like if, yeah, if you can forward this video greetings to you, um, maybe you get to see it. Yeah, so this rickshaw driving, like, you know, I've been now doing this really, really insane long days. Uh, I don't know how many kilometers my wrists are sore, my bum is sore, I feel my legs tired. Um, but, like, for me, it's like kind of almost a choice. And that's interesting, I'm getting into this. So we are going now to the bigger picture. Bigger picture, I see this video might go over eight minutes, but so what? So the bigger picture on the bike taxi is really, do we need this? So when you look at this bike taxi, I don't know where it's made. I wouldn't be surprised if it's made in China. I'm, I'm only the driver, right? I'm not responsible. <laughs> so, um, and of course it takes resources to build and to run it, to operate it, to have it around. If you compare it to like a car taxi, right? Because this can seat three people. We can drive like, you know, quite long distances even. Like we most of the time drive like, uh, um, we're driving only four kilometers from here so anyhow so this uh, from the city center of Yuensu and and the um, I, I got just distracted because they got a call on my phone like somebody was calling for a taxi so <laughs> so when you look at all these resources that I used to build this taxi then of course it needs to be there you know it needs to be put to good use and I was just about to compare the freight the, the car taxi and the bike taxi so it's really like in the in I think very very many taxi rides this is really a good alternative um, I wouldn't even call it an alternative because that would kind of sound that the other one is the better one so um, like compare the freight of the vehicle with the freight of the load right of all the customers put together so if I have one customer already in the taxi then together we are lighter than uh, heavier than the taxi so try to do that with a bike car taxi you have five people in it and the car is still heavier so in terms of efficiency like the bike taxi is a big winner um, when I look at what we are using it for then I'm a bit like wondering am I more on the side of the problem than part of the solution by providing this service as a driver because very often I feel like I'm the alternative to walking so uh, or, or people just say, oh, bike taxi, we try this. It's just the experience, which is like nice. You know, we should have good experiences, enjoy ourselves uh, and, and serve each other. Um, I don't know, maybe for free, um, free economy is really nice. But anyhow, the, um, the, the thing with the bike taxi is I feel like, okay, this is just uh, in many, many rides, just adding to the bulk of our footprint. Uh, it's not really necessary to have this, it's a luxury. So I feel like, um, like I would hope that people, you know, instead of saying like, okay, we want to go from this bar to this bar, 150 meter. Like if you're wise, you have a bicycle or you don't mind walking, uh, you organize yourself somewhere around. But suddenly there's this new opportunity, another need. Um, 
And I, I wish we had never had car taxis, only buses and, and maybe very few car taxis and mostly bike taxis. Um, because I, I, I think these lightweight vehicles, that's, that's really a way to go. What I'm really bothered by a little bit is, is this whole thing about the new resources and the new energy. So I think we can do a lot wiser um, mobility by having lightweight vehicles that already exist. So bicycles that exist, bicycles that are adopted by adding a trailer where you can put maybe one person or, or even build freight bikes. But building freight bikes is a bit more complicated. So I think trailers are really, really good, very versatile. Um, and that can be built from recycled bicycle parts, so we don't need new resources. Uh, and then, of course, adjust all the infrastructure to it, just use the roads. Like, I don't know, uh, instead of gluing myself to the road to, to have my civil disobedience, I just drive on the road and adjust the speed of the whole traffic, which I think is just awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that's about it. Um, oh, money. Yeah, like... We can talk a lot about money, but I think that's another video. Yes. Like, just for example, when I compare uh, 90 minutes of, um, of, of doing uh, sustainability consulting, right? What I do, uh, advertising. Yes, me, that's me. I'm doing sustainability consulting also. And I get like 10 times as much money for the kind of, well, like, the same money for 10 times less time, which I think is like ridiculous when you look at how much effort it is. So that's a call for, you know, fair pace, I guess, and reducing my demands. <laughs> okay. Hey, everyone, that was it from me. I wish you all a jolly good time. And um, please have a look at my other videos and share, like, subscribe. And thank you very much for watching until here. Bye-bye. Love you.